Hundreds of people line up in central Kabul for food that will keep their families from starving. Fazal Iyala is here with his son. Among the 24 people he lives with, just one has a job. The crowds, the desperation, and tempers fled. The Taliban tried to keep order. A stalled economy, punishing international sanctions, and a new Taliban government still struggling to run a country. All this has left Afghanistan hungry. According to UNICEF's World Food Program, more than 23 million Afghans face acute hunger, and 9 million are nearly famished. The charity Afghanistan for Tomorrow works with the World Food Program to distribute the aid. If this program do not exist, maybe there will be a very huge uh, disaster in Afghanistan. Maybe we have lots of people uh, dying. Each person receives flour, kidney beans, cooking oil and salt. For some, it's too late. In a world where adults make the decisions, it can often seem like children pay the consequences. That's what it feels like here, in the Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul, where children are starving, on the point of death, in desperate need of medicines that are nowhere to be found. The UN predicts more than one million children are at risk of dying from malnutrition this year. Dr. Amina Hajar shows me around the hospital's malnutrition ward. This is baby Hamad. This patient is eight months old, male baby. Uh, he is uh, severe acute and severe acute malnutrition. He is in a special case. Special case are those cases which uh, they are more than six months old, but the, their weights are less than four kg. Till now, his condition didn't improve. Are you worried? Yes, yes. His mother says she doesn't have the money to feed him properly. The hospital is overwhelmed. Too few doctors, too many starving children. Staff worry that before the week ends, one of these children will die. Gula has brought her four-year-old son, Stanishar. He's been sick for two months. Like the rest of Afghanistan, the hospital is under new management, the Taliban. Dr. Mohammed Hazib Wadak says two decades of an American-led occupation has left his country in ruins. The America Tahrimuna na balki daga shal kala chit mubani zalam kladiya, ak mubani daga na khud ragledi. That tool the America of the Hugo de Mutahidino, Zmug de Malkesh Galwa, Mugwandara Jang Tahmil Shawaiwa. Still, now the country is the Taliban's responsibility and the economy continues to crater. Until today, the staff hadn't been paid for two months. An ambulance arrives, another child in need. The nurses can only hope that they'll have the medicines to treat this boy. Here at the park in central Kabul, Afghans come to picnic and play cricket. Meters away, others consume drugs, heroin and methamphetamine. Rahimullah has been using heroin for 20 years. He survives by selling recyclables found in the rubbish. His home is this park. His family lives somewhere else. Residents of the city complain that open-air drug use has become a common sight in recent years. Addicts and doctors say a collapsing economy, decades of war, and the fact that Afghanistan produces close to 90% of the world's opium could explain the sky-high rates of addiction. Now that the Taliban are in charge of Afghanistan, they're tackling the problem with force.
Afghanistan is going through a drugs crisis. There could be millions of addicts in this country. The new government's solution is to bring those addicts here to the country's largest rehabilitation center. The patients line up for lunch. Over the winter, the Taliban rounded up thousands of drug addicts living on the street, forcibly detaining them here at the Ibn Sina Center for Drug Addiction Treatment. Today, a drug rehab center, once it was a US military base, Camp Phoenix. The Taliban say they are combating a problem left to fester and grow by previous governments. <laughs> Some patients complain that their treatment was supposed to last 45 days, yet three months later they're still here, detained against their will. The center says that it will only release people to their families, so they won't return to the streets. The center is meant for 1,000 people, but there are close to 3,000 patients here. Staff say they haven't been paid in months, Patients say there's not enough to eat. Some come voluntarily. Jawad is married with five children and has been addicted for 17 years. His head is shaved to avoid any lice infestation. He hopes that in 45 days, he'll be a man free of his addiction. Everything has changed since the Taliban have taken over, even the zoo. The Kabul Zoo was built under a king, survived the Soviet Union invasion in 1979, destroyed in a civil war and rebuilt under the American occupation. And in 2022, there's a new site here, the Taliban. It's quickly become a favorite place for these men who just last year were fighting across this country to overthrow the former government and oust American troops. A trip to the zoo and its more than 600 animals was something many never imagined making. This is 21-year-old Hafizullah's first visit. With thousands of Taliban visiting Afghanistan's only zoo, new rules have been introduced. Guns must be left at the entrance. As we film, another member of the Taliban shoves and insults our camera woman. His commander apologizes and we started talking. Dua Muhammad comes from Helmand province, the spiritual heartland of the Taliban. He spent nearly two decades fighting in the insurgency. The zoo sees its role to educate all Afghans on their country's wildlife, but also to distract people from the country's ongoing troubles. To know the uh, animals of Afghanistan, to know the birds of Afghanistan, to know the natural of Afghanistan. They are coming to the zoo, see the animals after fightings, after more problems, they are uh, uh, relaxed. During the chaotic collapse of the former government last year, the zoo closed for just one day. The zoo works to preserve Afghanistan's endangered wildlife, like this leopard. Alina was caught in a trap in the wild, destroying her leg. She was brought to the zoo to tend to her wounds, so saving her life. <coughs> she still seems angry. As the economy collapses, the zoo says its finances are healthy and is even planning on expanding. And it hopes to keep providing a small space where Afghans can forget for a few hours their country's problems.
خونک بود خوب یک بوش و یک بوش میکنی شکوخا چهر بشکوخا تیجم کرد بسش کم است his name is Sorab, delivered an hour ago by a midwife here at Rabia Balki, Afghanistan's largest women's hospital. Chronically understaffed, doctors and nurses struggle to see all the patients. Inside and out, the women wait their turn. Staff here guessed that 50 doctors and nurses have left the hospital since the Taliban took control last August, leaving it as much as 30% short-staffed. On some shifts, just two midwives care for 60 women who could give birth at any moment. Tens of thousands of Afghans have fled this country since the Taliban took control, fearing the new government. Among them were many skilled professionals, pilots, engineers, technicians, doctors and it's exactly those types of skills this country will need if it's to ever recover every day the exodus is felt in the hospital kambud staff mitana bois shava ke tadai marzan ba waqt wadish nashav ba marzan rastegi durust nashav tadai mariz ba waqt durust nashav ba marzan ba waqt mayna miyan mayne ba mauqi nashan marizan naraz shav ar shafa khana va shikayat ha bakunan ar shafa khana ki khidmat shan namisha those who have stayed behind are forced to do the work of those who left. 16-hour shifts are the norm. They know this puts the patients at risk. They wonder how long can they go. Disaster is always close. A two-day-old baby's heart stops. A nurse revives him, saving his life. No one knows if staff will be there for the next time it happens. مثل قبل شما دو تا قرنوز داده میدین که تفلک هرست داده بود. اگر هان تایم دکتر را قبل نایم بود، تفلک دایت میشه. و اگر وقت ما از وقت در روزانه ده تا خونده وقت داریم. Not everyone wants to leave. Some see their job as to stay and help the people of their country in these hard times. I <laughs> ما یک دکتر هستم بر ما مهم نیست که کی در اصل دولت است حتی بر ما مهم نیست که کی در اصل شفاخانه است It's going to take time and resources to train the next generation of doctors and nurses to fill the staffing shortfall Afghanistan's path to reconstruction will be a long and arduous journey <laughs>